and um, perhaps a good example of that would be Guantanamo Bay. Now, regarding your views on individual rights and the fact that the time of the is a war for works, how do you react to Guantanamo Bay in the situation? Um, people who try to kill me don't have rights. It's just a fact. When you violate somebody else's rights, you lose your own. All of them. You steal an apple. You've lost your rights. The government's job is then to take you and figure out what the just punishment is. If the stealing an apple, the just punishment, you know, there's a slap on the wrist in a couple of days in jail, maybe, or whatever. But if you're trying to kill people, then the just punishment is your own death, in my view. Or at least putting you away for the rest of your life. It is my belief, and I don't want to get into a long discussion. I know those of you who are staunch libertarians, and there's a difference between objectivists and libertarians. So those of you who are staunch libertarians are really upset about my foreign policy views. <laughs> but, you know, we're not here to really discuss foreign policy. Um, the people in Guantanamo Bay were trying to kill me. They were out to kill Americans. They were caught on the battlefield with guns in their hands, trying to shoot Americans that under, you know, that were there to defend me, defend Americans, and were there, in my view mistakenly, to bring freedom to the Afghans. And they weren't even there to oppress the Afghans and to turn them into slaves. They were there to free them. And had these people shooting at them. That's how freedom loving these guys are. I, I don't know what human rights violations happened in Guantanamo. I don't think any did. What? The fact that they took the Quran and flushed it down the toilet? I mean, I can think of, uh, I don't view that as a, as a human rights violation. Um, Okay, they probably did. They probably did the people their favor. Um, I guess that's Mike. So, look, war is hell. War is a bad thing. It's not a good thing. But the only responsibility of a government going to war and assuming it's a just war—that is, it's a war in self-defense. The only, the only justice of a war is to defend yourself. When you go to defend yourself, you do whatever is necessary to win. That's the only consideration you should have. You know? and, and when the West had that approach to fighting wars, they won. You know? And that will involve killing a lot of innocent people. I'm the, I'm the one guy who's not embarrassed to say that. When you go to war, innocent people are going to die. Many innocent people. Just ask the children in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They died. They were innocent. You can talk about the adults and question how innocent they really were. But the children clearly were innocent, right? They had nothing to do with this war. But they died. That's sad. And it's the fault of the Japanese. It's not the fault of Truman. It's the fault of the Japanese. They should have started World War II. Many children died at Dresden. Sad for the children. Tragic, even. Whose fault is it? Hitler's. Not Churchill for approving the bombing of Dresden. Indeed, Churchill and Truman are moral, ethical heroes for doing that and ending those wars and minimizing the casualties of their own people and ultimately in Japan of the Japanese themselves, but certainly of American troops. They are heroes for having them all backbone to to be to to you know to do what was necessary to win. We today don't have that in our backbone and therefore we fight unwinnable wars, endless wars, wars with no end. Many, 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 many people are still gonna die in the war we are fighting because we're not willing to win this. We're not willing to do what's necessary to win. Non foreign policy questions. <laughs>